Hey, how's it going? Do it yourself, Ayers. So today, my garage almost burned down. So of course, in a potential electrical fire situation like this, the first thing you need to do is to go grab the fire extinguisher. So that's what I did. I ran around the back, grabbed the fire extinguisher, and I was running back to the garage. A thought crossed my mind, which was, this is a great time to talk about the relationship between voltage, resistance, and amps. So I don't know, I left the fire extinguisher back there, grabbed the camera, and here we are. Now you might be thinking, hey, I thought this was a channel about cars. Well, it is, but if you ever wanna know how to properly test a battery, a solenoid or a sensor, or the wiring on your car, again, you need to understand the relationship between voltage, resistance, and current. And while we're at it, we're also gonna talk about wire gauges and watts as well. All right, there's a, quite a few videos on YouTube where people do analogies of the relationship between voltage, resistance and ohms, you know, they say voltage is like a speed of a bullet or a cannonball. And then the resistance is like a dam or the voltage is like water. And then there's a dam, you know, I really think you need to forget about all that crap because that just confuses people. Uh, you know, we're talking about subatomic particles when we're talking about this electricity and subatomic particles don't give a f Yeah, subatomic particles or electrons behave in ways that we're not really used to seeing in our physical world. The best way to understand the relationship between voltage, resistance, and amps or current is to simply memorize Ohm's law, which is voltage equals current times resistance. Now, units of measurement for voltage is volts, for resistance is ohms, and for current is amps. So another way you can remind, remember this is to remember that voltage equals amps times resistance. All right, so for example, this outlet if you live in the US, you, gotta, you should have about 110 to 120 volts. And then your lights, your computer, or whatever else you decide to hook up to that outlet has a resistance and therefore a current draw. Now this light fixture, for example, as you can see, uses 1.82 amps of current. All right, so since we already have the voltage for that light fixture and the manufacturer has given us the amp draw on that fixture, we can simply plug it into our equation and figure out the resistance of that fixture. So again, we use Ohm's law, but we switch things around so that we have resistance on one side, since we already have two of the numbers of this equation. So we have 120 over 1.82 amps, which gives us 65.93 ohms of resistance. However, especially when you're working with household appliances or fixtures, you're not given, you're usually not given the amps, you're actually given a wattage of that device. So again, back to our light fixture. On the label again, you can see that we indeed have the wattage, which is 216. Now this label is actually a pretty good example for this. Watts equals voltage times amps. Now again, if you don't know your amp draw, simply when you have the wattage for that device, you already know what kind of voltage you have at your outlet. You simply divide wattage by voltage, you get your amps. And that's important because you don't want to overload the circuit for that outlet. Now, as you can see on the circuit breaker for this circuit, this circuit is supposed to be, I should say, a 20 amp circuit. Now, what makes a 20 amp circuit? Well, when you have a 20 amp circuit, that means that circuit, if built correctly, should be able to handle 20 amps. The more amps you put into a circuit, the more heat you generate in the, the, on the load, all the wiring, all the electrical components that make up that circuit. And all those components have to be able to withstand 20 amps of current going through them. Because if they're not, then that circuit is gonna fail and you could have what we have back there on an electrical fire. So for example, on your car, on these tiny sensors that have a very high resistance, you only need these tiny little wires because not a whole lot of current is going to be able to pass through these sensors. Whereas on your starter, you will need a thick cable or wire going from your battery to that starter because the starter draws the most amount of current from your battery on your car. And you need a thick wire to be able to handle that, that much current. And that's another reason why people could be confused with all the analogies made on the internets. We're gonna wait for these birds. And that's why you shouldn't really do analogies of you know water and dams and you know, bowling balls going down the hill and stuff because, you know, a tiny little res resistor or a sensor can have a high resistance to a flow of current and have a very low amp draw. But on the other hand, a much bigger when compared to a small sensor starter motor can have a very low resistance to the flow of current and have a huge or high amp draw. 
All right, and as far as wire gauges go, the lower the number, the thicker the wire. Now, this is obviously for, you know, use inside the house. You know, the copper one is your ground, the black one is your power, and then the white one is your neutral. All right, now, as far as what happened here. Well, my circuit breaker, which is obviously there to protect the circuit, so things like uh, electrical fires don't happen, obviously did not trip. I did this myself. Now, I do have nearly all the lights in the garage, my computer, and all my battery chargers hook to these uh, power taps, which are then again, obviously we're connected to this outlet. Now what I'm thinking is that this outlet is actually not rated for 20 amps. This outlet itself might be rated for 15 amps. So let's open it up and see. <laughs> I was right. Come on, focus. Vindicate me. So I was probably pulling close to 15 amps, so these didn't trip, but since this outlet is probably made, I don't know, 50 years ago, it failed. Don't look at me, I didn't do the wiring in that place. Uh, some of you may know, I recently purchased this property and it looks like we're some uh, poor DIY action going on all over the place and obviously including the wiring. So if you enjoyed this crash course and want to support my channel, all you have to do is to simply watch another one of my videos. You can either click on this one in this corner, click on the one right below it, or click on and watch any of my videos in the suggestion box, that will help as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.